<laughs> well, Mr. Bob Wisnowitz, I, I pronounced your name correctly right out of the box. I'm really impressed with myself. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. Welcome, Bob uh, Wisnowitz. And you're a member of Connecting Consciousness. And we're talking about Connecting Consciousness in Illinois. It's, it's encouraging to know there is consciousness here. We've been at this for a couple, I guess, a few weeks now in Illinois. And Bob, you've been really, you were one of the first people that popped into my screen here in Illinois as a conscious person. And you were, you were very helpful and encouraging and supporting because you self-identified as a, a tech person. So I think most of us, a lot of us have uh, apprehension about all things technical, but what, uh, what can you offer us? So far, you've, you've introduced a lot of our members to the Slack program, and you've given us some counsel about maybe some of the pitfalls of being on Facebook and maybe even Telegram. So why don't you talk to us tonight about uh, your background and experience and expertise and how it might apply to our journey here together in Illinois in Connecting Consciousness. Sure thing, Stanley. So I, I started out as a mathematics teacher um, as a grad student, and then I taught at a junior college and I taught high school. But I, I kind of quickly got out of that and got into programming. So I've been in IT for about 35 years. And um, most of it was at a, a big regional bank in downtown Chicago on LaSalle Street. And I, I did, I was fortunate to have moved around a lot at the bank and gotten a lot of experience, including things like doing land support, troubleshooting, uh, networking, uh, some R&D projects, and uh, worked a lot with Macintosh computers uh, after a while. And, and that worked out real good for me because it gave me kind of a well-rounded background. And it kind of made me not afraid to try stuff. And it's good to, to be in that kind of mindset, um, especially like, like when we started out, we needed, a, we needed a platform where people could share ideas and uh, eventually work on project plans together for something like implementing med beds. Uh, you know, what, what would all the tasks be and who would be good to do different things? So that, that worked out real good. We did we kind of did a quick study looking at, at uh, collaboration tools. Uh, and we, we started out with uh, one that got some negative reviews from the national uh, office. So we, we kind of dropped that. I did a quick study and um, I found Slack. And actually I was looking at a, I was watching an Apple Worldwide Developers Conference call. To, at the kickoff, they announced new products. So I always get on and, and listen to that. And um, in the recording that they did, a Slack message came through to one of the senior vice presidents. So I made a note, Slack, I wonder what that is. And then when I did the quick search, I came across Slack as, as a, good, a good product to start out with. Well, a couple of our members have, have recognized it. Actually, today I got an email from one of our members who remembers it from Columbia College. She was a student at Columbia College uh, about three or four years ago. And she said they, the student body and the administration used it uh, as part of the curriculum there at Columbia College here in Chicago. Neat. Mm -hmm. Neat. I mean, it, seems, it seemed like a good thing to start out with because it was kind of highly recommended just by doing an internet search, but then also uh, that Apple used it, but also you could start out uh, on a free platform. So until you exceed certain amounts of storage, and, and uh, I, I did do a channel with best practices, uh, telling people not to jam big files in there, but we could, we could put those aside and just, just uh, do links to them. So that would keep us mm -hmm. uh, on a free platform longer. Well, it's also been helpful just because you organized all the main topics, which was great because a lot of new people can simply look at the Slack uh, page we have and see all of our topics, which are the spiritual, the med beds, the healing, the children, the uh, consciousness purpose, meditation, uh, religion, politics. We've got quite a few topics going on. There are. In fact, I added a couple more today. Uh, the one on religion was one. Um, 
I don't, can't recall the other one right now, but it's so easy. Uh, to... Art and music. I think we had art and music because it yes. turns out we have a lot of people who are into art and music and a number of people who we've talked to about events. And I've asked, I've, I've challenged people to tell me what, what will these events look like? And people have suggested they could be art or they indeed could be music. They could have an entertainment component to it. So I think those were great additions because uh, even um, even the Reverend, Reverend Rosemary Adcock, who I talked to last night, she is a minister, but she also is a practicing artist. So um, I wouldn't have you know thought about it, but um, art and music is, uh, creativity is a big part of connecting consciousness, apparently, in our at least in our group in Illinois. Sure. I, I did find a way to, because now we have about 15 channels or, or 15 topics, and I found a way that uh, wasn't too obvious, but there's a way where you could search through all the messages, no matter what channel they're in. So maybe yeah. I'll put that under, under best practices. <laughs> I'll nav navigate it. I'm just yeah. gonna quickly share the screen just so I can show people who um, we might direct to Slack, what it looks like. I mean, I'm not gonna give a tutorial or ask you to give a tutorial, but um, might be interesting to see what it looks like for people. Um, Bob is talking about, and excuse me if I'm sharing anyone's names that uh, shouldn't be, but just a real quick uh, areas of expertise, CC purposes, purpose, children, education, general health, uh, hydroxychloroquine, <laughs> I like hydroxychloroquine, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I should use the uh, the three letters from the periodic table or <laughs> uh, no, nobody would know what it was. No one would know. Uh, Simon Parks updates um, Slack, Slack capabilities, uh, support tech privacy channel. You know, Bob, after we exit this, I'm going to ask you about the privacy channel, just best practices for all of us, because I do get a lot of people very concerned about social media and communication and servers. They, you know, they believe that, you know, they might be being monitored or profiled or deplatformed. And uh, aside from the obvious, I mean, how, um, how concerned do we need to be about those issues? I, I don't think that we do because Slack in their, uh, in Slack.com talks a lot about their privacy and, and how they protect people's privacy. So, they're, they're secure. I mean, they talk about their security and they oh. protect privacy. Yeah, I think so you're right. I think you, I think you show as well. I was talking about just in general, like in our daily living, like in our email, our Gmail accounts, our Google searches. I know people are using alternative search engines. That's that's what I meant. Just more in general. And I think I think you're right. I think you chose a good platform for our purposes for privacy. But how else are we supposed to? How should, how concerned should we be beyond that? I, I think I think we should because look, if we took Google as an example. Google's not really, it, it's the best it's search engine that everybody uses or, or most people use. But what they do, they do a couple things that are not good. Uh, one, they filter the results that you get back. So they'll throw stuff out and you won't see them, um, which I really, I really don't like that. They put their, their results at the top. And, and, and they throw stuff out that they don't want you to see. Like if, I don't know, before the election, the presidential election, if you did a search on Hunter Biden, you wouldn't find much, even though the information was out there. So they're, they're doing that. It, it's not, and I don't like that. They, they, I'd rather use a browser like the Brave browser that doesn't do any of that. Facebook too, I, I mean, so many people use Facebook, but Facebook behind the scenes counts everything. They count uh, what you're interested in. They count what you like. They count what you don't like. Uh, they count where you go. They count what ad, you know, they figure out what ads to serve up to you based on your preferences. So I, I, that whole profiling thing, mm -hmm. I, I don't really like. No, it isn't. It's true. And it's uh, something you become aware of because that you're right after the first of the year, I became aware when I use Google of what was missing, because, you know, as we've all reached out to alternative news sources and alternative channels, we've, we, we've broadened our, our viewpoint uh, for good or for bad, but it is broader. And I'm, I'm, I've become aware that, that 
Google tends to be narrower. Yeah, I, I should say one thing that, that we did in Slack, Slack has some admin capabilities, actually quite a few admin capabilities. And one thing that I limited was I turned off any member could invite other members because we, we kind of want our workflow to go from creatingconsciousness.org to the national office, to the national database, and then have the invite come through you as opposed to, as to it could be a free for all if we let everybody do that. Anybody invite anybody else, that wouldn't be good. Uh, as far as becoming a member of Connected Consciousness. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But uh, since you bring it up again, since people might be new to sl our Slack with who are already members, how it's working for us is that they are emailing me that they're interested and then I'm asking you to invite them just so we're not, we didn't want to give a blanket invitation to people. Uh, not so much we don't want to include people, but we didn't want to solicit people who might not be interested in getting solicitation to join. So that's how we're operating right now. Very interesting, Bob. Just I was on a coordinator call with speaking of the national with the national coordinators tonight, and someone mentioned this the Starlink. Is it Starlink or Star Starlink Net Platform? Are you familiar with that? Star, uh, yeah, I'm so, somewhat familiar with it. So there's there are these Starlink satellites, and I I just read an article maybe an hour ago on the quantum financial system that is supposed to be using these Starlink satellites. So it's like it's like an internet connection that doesn't go through normal internet service providers like Comcast, but instead goes through the satellite network, which is kind of neat. Um, there's supposed to be nine of them. I thought there were more, there'll probably be more, but that's what the quantum financial system is supposed to run on. And the Starlink will actually, before too long, uh, they'll have enough satellites up there where, where they will offer the Starlink service as an alternative to uh, to what we use now. Yeah, that would be a welcome alternative. Now, Bob, I, I think it was I think it was you who made the comment that a lot of our members seem to be interested in everything. That most people want to hear about all of our topics. They don't want to be screened out or identified in one topic or two topics. They want they want to know about everything. Is that, is that the they, general they, theme here in Illinois? It, it, they do. And, and in fact, one, one of the things too in admin is that I everybody's allowed to be in every group. Otherwise, it would be a nightmare to pick and choose who should be in which group. Uh, it would be a nightmare for an admin to do that. So everybody's in every group, except if I create a private group, uh, like th there's one called Tech Private Group. It's got a padlock by it. There's only three members, but that, that's a nice feature. And I, and I, I kind of have to explain that to people because they, they don't, I've had people say, hey, Bob, add me to general or add me to medical professionals. And I said, hey, you're there already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you're there. By right. Well, I guess people are so used to being you know, excluded that they feel they need to ask. Yeah. Bob, a question I really need to ask people, which I, I guess it, I guess it seems obvious, but I, I need to ask like, what, what brought you to connecting consciousness? Like, how did you find your way to this group? I started watching bit shoot videos, and uh, I'm a subscriber to Charlie Ward, and part of his Insiders Club, and I saw the very first one that I saw had Simon on, with Charlie, and then I, I watched. Uh, some Simons and I, I enjoy Simons more than the others because he doesn't do like a, a committee meeting. It's just him speaking from his heart about what he knows. And, and there's no, uh, he's calming there, and, and there's no contention between people on the meetings because he's, he's the only speaker. I wish he'd do it more <laughs> because he, he seems to put out an update maybe like every two weeks, but I know there's a lot going on right now uh, for him. Well, I think that was explained to me that he basically shares when he feels he has something to share as opposed to just coming up with programming um, just for the sake of programming. So that's kind of where we are right now in Illinois with our particular little, little break. You know, we just started up in June here and we were having fun 
meeting each other and, and connecting with each other, but we're giving, we're giving a little break here uh, to have these one-on-ones with people and as we figure out where we want to go with this. But I did, at the national meeting tonight, they did set, tell us nationally that, that that is exactly what we're supposed to be doing. It's just simply getting to know each other, getting to know our members, and we're not really supposed to rush into events or projects right now. We, we certainly, that is the goal. That is definitely the goal. But we are doing what we need to be doing right now, and that's that's getting to uh, to know each other. So, uh, Bob, is there anything else you want to share with any of the rest of the members in Illinois that you um, maybe haven't had the opportunity to on the weekly calls we've had? I would just say that that uh, Slack is a platform that's really easy to use. I'm here for questions anytime, and um, I think it's a good collaboration platform, especially if we keep it if we keep we keep it at zero cost for a while. And I did find out too that if if we need to move to a paid version of it, we get a steep discount because we're a nonprofit. So mm -hmm. so that's good, and it's been Slack has been real well received by the membership too. Well, I. I've gotten a pleasure out of this because I can see people talking to each other and that, I mean, that's what it's about. I, I, I'm just supposed to be coordinated. I'm not supposed to be the, the topic of conversation or talking to everybody, but I, I really got a big kick out of seeing people are connecting and meeting each other and asking what area they're in. And uh, that's been really, that's been fun to watch. So, but Bob, I really can't thank you enough. I'm sure the rest of our members truly appreciate it. I did tell you when you first checked in and offered your services as, as a tech <laughs> tech guru, I did I did warn you that I would take full advantage of that. And I I don't think I've taken full advantage of you yet, but I hope at some point you feel fully taken advantage of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that, Stanley. Bob, if thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And I look okay. forward to again talking to you again real soon. Thank you so much, Bob. Okay.